overclocking the Zen 3 5000 series processors to 4.7 gigahertz. What can you expect in terms of Cinebench or 20 scores? First, what requirements you need before you contemplate overclocking? The first is adequate cooling, something like a 360mm radiator to cool your CPU. The second is that to understand the Zen 3 structure of the CPUs, which are basically 8 core CCXs. That, so that means the 5600X with 6 cores has 6 cores on its 8 core CCX with 2 disabled. So 6 active, 2 disabled. 5800X has 8 cores on its single CCX. 5900X has 2 six cores active per its two ccx's to make it up to 12 cores whilst the 5950x has two eight core ccx's all active <clears throat> so what does that mean it basically means with six cores active on its eight core ccx then the 5600x should be the best processor that's been released so far in terms of overclocking i.e. it'll be easier to cool whereas the 5800X should be hard to overclock because it's only got a single CCX with 8 cores similarly the 5900X with 6 cores should per CCX should be a lot better to cool <coughs> while the 5950X should be hard to overclock because it's got two 8 core CCXs then we come to the third point which is silicon quality basically you get what you pay for 5950x will obviously have the best silicon because it's the highest price processor then the 5900x and then the 5800x all the way down to the 5600x and we might get a 5300x 4 core cpu release sometime in 2021 don't know when but at four cores that should be <coughs> a very good processor to overclock. So this also means that the 5950X should be able to be overclocked because it's got the best silicon. Whereas the 5800X will have <coughs> slightly less good silicon so it should be hard to overclock. Anyway, let's find out what you can actually expect once you overclocked a 5000 series processor. Let's start with the 5600X the bottom of the range $300 processor. Its opening out of the box Cinebench score is 4346 multi and 609 single core. <coughs> and overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz, we get 4741 and a small bump on the single core to 615, about a 10% increase. Now, the main point it might not sound like much of an increase 4741 and 615 but the main thing to understand this is that at 4.7 gigahertz the 5600x is only just getting started you could probably overclock this to depending on your cooling to 5 gigahertz obviously it might not be able to stay at 5 gigahertz for long before crashing so maybe just good for a benchmark <clears throat> and this is borne on by the temperatures at 4.7 gigahertz the 5600x runs at around the mid 70s that is well below uh, amd's limit of 90 degrees which it recommends you should not let the processors go over so it's got headroom for at least 4.9 gigahertz and maybe if you're lucky depending on your silicon quality you'll hit 5 gigahertz with temperatures around the low 90s which is still too hot for me I prefer maximum temperatures around the low 80s when it's under load all of these scores are obviously under load because you're doing Cinebench scores so the 5600X is a great processor because it's got one CCX with six active cores which gives it the best headroom for overclocking that is until the 5300X comes out so that's a winner and the, what about the 5800X fortunately did not run stable at 4.7 gigahertz which is does not come as any surprise it's got 
lower quality silicon all eight cores active and thus it's the hardest processor to overclock and it failed at 4.7 gigahertz which was the is what we were testing for here next we come to the 5900x which are considered to be one of the two best processors out 5600x and 5900x are the best value for money processors and it also successfully overclocked at 4.7 gigahertz giving a Cinebench score of 9260 over 8178 that is a very respectable 13% increase fortunately it did drop on the single core to 608 from 631 which is what uh, these Zen 3 processors are doing when you overclock them it throttles single core performance but it gives you higher multi-core apart from that is for the 3600X so it confirms that the 5900X is a great process that you get easily a 10% increase in performance and it temperatures were under 90 degrees around the mid 80s for 4.7 gigahertz so if you've got a good cooling and you can limit temperature rise to the mid 80s then you could permanently run a 5900X system at 4.7 gigahertz and you depending on your silicon you might even get 4.8 gigahertz 4.9 gigahertz though i think the temperatures will be going over 90 degrees by then easily maybe 100 degrees so it's not something for actual real world use maybe just for a benchmarking exercise but it just confirmed the 5900x is a great processor can be easily overclocked with good cooling to 4.7 gigahertz permanent now we come to the 5950x 16 core monster yes it can be overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz and it gives a massive jump to 12 260 on cinebench that is a massive 18 percent increase in performance of course the single core force the 608 makes it the same as the 5900x but that's what you have to give up single core performance for multi-core performance increase unfortunately it's not sustainable 12 260 on 28 core ccx is not sustainable you're virtually hitting 100 degrees well beyond the amd's 90 degree limit 100 degrees that's you're going to kill the processor it's going to develop faults over time it's going to worsen in performance so it's not something you can actually use to over and this is with good cooling to overclock a 5950x you're going to have to limit you have to be looking at even 4.6 degrees will be too hot that'll still be around 90 4.6 gigahertz will be make it run too hot probably around 4.5 gigahertz with good cooling for the mid 80s maybe even 4.4 gigahertz for the low 80s it obviously runs very hot the 5950x runs very hot because it's got 16 cores so that means the best processor here for overclocking are the two best value for money processors the 5600x and the 5900x where you can run the 5900x stable at 4.7 gigahertz for a decent 13 percent increase in performance though you lose on single core so you might want to dial that back dial that down slightly to say 4.6 gigahertz so you don't take such a big hit on the single core maybe get 615 same for the 5950x dial it back so you get higher single cores say dial uh, to 4.6 yeah. and dial this one back to 4.4 so then you get a better lower temperatures and you get higher single core performance whilst the worst process here is the 1500x you got no you ain't got much overclocking headroom probably 4.6 giga max it's basically similar to a 4.5 whilst you could 
increase the 3600x to 5600x to 4.8 gigahertz for a better multi-core performance obviously but obviously when if you're buying a 5600x you're buying it for gaming so you want a higher single core performance for gaming it's so basically at these gigahertz you all the cpus will deliver around 615 on single core the same single core performance whilst maximizing multi-core and it's only the 5600x which increases its single core performance over stock that is until the 5300x comes out probably early 2021 maybe february i'm guessing it is a guess at this point in time well, you can forget about the 5700X. I don't think that's going to come out. So there you have it. The Cinebench 56, 5000 series overclocking. What you can expect and what you should aim for. Let's go through them again. 5600X should aim for 4.6 gigahertz with good cooling, sustainable for a good you know, near 10% jump in performance over stock for a 5800x it doesn't run stable at 4.7 you're going to be looking around 4.4 4.5 for about 10 percent increase 5900x similar you're gonna have 4.7 yeah you can run it at 4.7 for around 13 percent but you lose on the single cut so you might want to dial it back to 4.6 for a 10 percent increase on multi-core performance whilst for the 5950x yes it runs at 4.7 gigahertz but it runs too hot near 100 degrees you're gonna have to dial that back a lot maybe to 4.4 gigahertz and you might get say 618 on the single core and it'll give you about a 10 percent increase so basically with good cooling you're aiming for around a 10% jump in performance on multi-core for the 5600X, 5900X and 5950X. That's what you should be aiming for. And your key pointer will be the temperatures. So aiming for around 80 degrees, low 80s. That should be okay for, the, for a long run use. Uh, under load obviously your system not going to be under load all the time unless you're gaming constantly which you probably will be with the 5600x but around 80 degrees should be fine for long-term use you don't want it to go into over at 90 degrees or over that's gonna you're gonna develop faults in your cpu so i would say the low 80s 80 to 78 to 82 will be the sweet spot under load 84 acceptable 86 pushing it 90 no 100 definitely no so that's what i would suggest for what you can expect from the 5000 series and what overclocking you should be aiming for in terms of clock speed 4.4 for 5950x 4.6 is the 5900x 5800X, 4.5, 4.4, depending on whether it runs stable, depending on your silicon quality. Well, the 5600X, 4.7 gigahertz will run fine, mid 70s. That's, you could even up, depending on your silicon quality, you could put it up to 4.8 gigahertz if it runs stable. Excellent processes. Now, I was contemplating uh, another system based on the 5950X but 5900X seems to be the productivity sweet spot because you can overclock it the 5900X can be overclocked whilst the 5950X will run hot it already runs hot that's why the, the out of the box you know, frequencies are so low was it 3.8 for the 5950X across all cores against 4.3 for the 5900X. That's because of the temperatures and how much watt power they consume. You know, they got them limited to 120 watts each. 
so that's why it's got a lot lower clock speed for the 5950X than the 5900X. Same goes for the 5600X. It's got much more headroom to overclock than the other processors. Until that is, the 5300X comes out. Anyway, do subscribe for new videos.